Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss in a Budget and I'm going to talk to you today about how to get startup money for your nonprofit. from Boston a Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So today, let's talk about startup funding. Yes, everyone wants to know, how do I get money for my nonprofit? I have a really good idea. This means a lot to me. This is really important. People need to be giving me money, but where do I find the money? Where do I go? By far, the number one question I get, but I mostly get it in the context of grants. So I have a Facebook group that's help, that helps people um, with nonprofit grant writing. So a lot of times when people come to the group, they'll ask about startup grants. But I just wanted to do a video just in general for startup funding and things to think about and consider when you're a startup about where you're going to get your money from. OK, so first, I always got to have the caveat, right? I always have to prepare you first and then go into it. So the first thing I'm going to say is, don't ever, ever approach your nonprofit like it's going to be easy, right? So a lot of times people, people like fall for the okie doke and they think that I have a good, I have a good reason to start. I have a good idea. This is going to be easy. I'm just going to get people to donate and I'm going to get a nice fat chunk of money from a funder and I'll be good to go. But you got to put in work to be a successful nonprofit and you as a founder and you as the founding board, all you're going to do is talk, network, um, do communications and fundraising. You wanna, you're going to have to focus on that for heavily for the first couple of years to even get anywhere before you can even begin to think about programming, which you have to be doing at the same time to show that you have some kind of credibility and you have experience. But just remember that this is not for the weak. OK, so any assumption or anything that someone has told you that it's easy, just go for grants. <laughs> it's simple. Maybe it's simple, but it's not easy. And I don't know if that makes sense, but it it's a simple strategy to get there. But the amount of effort and work it takes to get there and be successful is not for the weak. So just keep that in mind. The second thing I'm going to say is that you got to know the field that you're working in. So if you look at data you'll see that where nonprofits get their money from, most times they get their money from individuals, okay? So they don't mostly get their money from grants. They don't mostly get their money from like big major donors. They get money from people like you and me. Now, I don't know about you watching this video, but I'm, I guess I'm middle class or whatever. You can say that. It's people like me who give small gifts and probably are cultivated to give more at certain times in the year that really help nonprofits survive. So I think about my mom, right? So she has like, a probably like a list of 10 organizations that she gives to every year. And these are organizations that I don't, she doesn't really have connections to like St. Jude's or I think one of the organizations she gives to is like an animal shelter. We've never really had pets in the house, but she just has a mindset of giving. And most everyday people, are just kind of programmed like we give, we donate. That's what we're supposed to do. We want to help. So you're really going to need to concentrate on what your strengths are. And your strength is individual donors. So don't go like all in on grants, especially in the beginning. It's not going to be worth the time and the effort. It should be a part of your fundraising strategy, but it should definitely not be the primary part of your strategy. You really need to focus on individuals and how to cultivate donors who believe in your mission, who want to like go through this with you, who want to join the journey with you. They may not be able to do the work, but they'll contribute their time and their money. Okay. So just keep that in mind as we talk about startup funding. There are also a couple of things administratively that you need to do to get ready for funding, which I'll talk about in other videos, but things like creating a budget, knowing how much you want to raise, being able to articulate you know, what you do, making the case for your organization. Those are all things that you really need to have straight before you start fundraising. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. I'll save that for later. Um, but I just want to talk to you about five ways or five sources of money for startups for nonprofit. 
Okay, let's go. So the first one I want to talk about is your board. Okay, so many people miss this. Many people who are new to nonprofits don't understand this, but your board of directors should be giving to your organization. They should know that from the break, from the minute they join you, from the minute they start sitting at the table with you to make decisions, they should already know, I am also committing my pockets to this organization. Yes, I'm committing my mind and my thoughts and feedback and my effort, but also my pockets, right? So the board should be financing part of the organization startup. So the money that you need to incorporate and the money you need to apply for tax exempt status, that's going to come from your board, especially in the beginning when you don't have a lot of connections early on and you don't really have like the, the proof or the credibility that you've done anything yet. You should be relying on your board to help kind of get you where you need to be as a startup. And mind you, I make videos for startups. So this may be different and the strategies may be different for people who are more established, but my heart is with the startups, okay? So you should commit, well, okay, we're gonna give this much money every month. Like, let's establish a month, like it's five of us. If we all commit, let's say $50 a month, that's gonna help keep us afloat because we don't wanna have to worry about little things like printing or things like our fees for you know the state or for the IRS. You don't want that to get in your way and have to stop and fundraise for $600 or $275 to get your tax exempt status, you should just start from the beginning. Hey, we're going to build our budget up and hey, these are our, our board contributions. Those are donations. So they can write those off. But again, they, they should be expected to contribute monthly. Okay. The second thing I will say for the source of your startup funding is partly through your board, but also through others. So some fundraisers will call this like peer to peer fundraising. So that means that people who are connected to the organization, your board members, volunteers, or even other donors are working to fundraise for you, are explaining you know, the, the greatness of your organization to others and raising for you and bringing that money to the organization. And in the beginning, you're not going to have a lot of volunteers and you're not going to have a lot of donors, but again, you have your board. So what I would suggest you do is talk to the board about, okay, we all should be expected to raise a certain amount of money. Say each board member should be expected to raise $5,000, right? So if you have five board members, that's $25,000. So this is outside of what they're giving. So then break that down. What will it take for each of us to get the money we need to raise our $5,000? And Think simply about this. Don't think about, okay, we got to do these complicated fundraisers. Think about how we used to do it in the old days, right? So I remember when my cousin wanted to do like a missions trip. I think it was like either to Korea or Israel or something like that. She took pictures of herself doing her missions work. She wrote a nice little letter and she wrote the family and she asked each family member to give her $50. And don't you know that she got to wherever she was going because... They were connected to her. They believed in it. She explained what she was doing. She showed pictures. She followed up after that because people knew she was legit. She was legitimately doing this. That's what got people to give. And that's what you're going to have to do with your board. Ask them to write down, okay, so who's in our, what they call a circle of influence? Who can we talk to and appeal to, to give to us to support our mission? And yes, that individual may not be giving a whole lot of money. $50 may not be a whole lot or maybe for some people. But as a collective, as we all come together, whew, it's going to be a lot. It's going to make the difference. So don't underestimate the power of fundraising through your board and help them break it down. OK, if you need to raise five thousand, well, we can do an event where we raise a thousand dollars here or we can appeal to. Um, 20 people and 20 people can give $20 or however you want to do it, break it down to bite-sized chunks. But one little tip I will say is whoever they reach out to and whoever gives to you, make sure you have a list of those people and their contact information. If they give to you, follow up with them, say thank you, start building a relationship with them from day one. Reach out to them months later and say, hey, we didn't forget that you gave to us. Here, you know, here's an example of what we've done with this money. This is how we've progressed. Get used to having an ongoing conversation with people who give you money. That's going to save you in the long run. All right. 
So the third place you're going to find startup money is, I know I said I wasn't going to start about, say anything about grants, but I'm going to talk about grants here. So grants. Um, I suggest for people who are trying to find grant money in the beginning to start local and start with your community. One of the first places you need to go to is your community foundation. So if you just Google your state or your town or your county and community foundation, trust me, it'll come up. Find who the, you know, where the community foundations are in your area, reach out to them, talk to them about what you're trying to do, what your organization is about, the outcomes that you're, you know, you're looking to have with your services and just sit down and build a relationship with them. They'll often know about community grants or family foundations who may be interested in you. They often have like workshops and trainings to help with fundraising or they just provide all kinds of assistance. And most people don't know about their community foundations. Also figure out if there's a nonprofit association in your area and they can do similar things. They can do training and development for you and your board that may be useful. But going back to grants, your community foundation is really important because they can identify the local, you know, sources of money that may be small that but can hook you up and kind of help breathe life into your budget. The other thing you should think about is do you have like local clubs in your area like um the Kiwanis Club or local associations that may give small grants or neighborhood grants? Think about like those small groups that may be interested in financing your startup. So look at local businesses. So I suggest that people kind of create a list of the businesses that they use in their personal life and in their professional life. So do you, you know, utility companies, banks, stores, all those kind of things, phone companies, make a list of the name of those brands and then research them and see if they have community grants. A lot of them do. Like think about Walmart. Walmart has a community grant program. It depends on the area about how much and how willing they are to work with you, but check out Walmart. They'll give you $500 for something. And that may not seem like a lot, but you need those easy and quick wins in the beginning. So search for small and local community grants. The other thing I wanted to circle back on with the community foundation is Sometimes they have grants specifically for startups, right? Sometimes they'll give you money even if you're not if you're not um, incorporated or have a 501c3 yet. Sometimes they'll give you money to get that. So open your mind and think about who in your local area can support you through some kind of grant funding. The fourth thing you should think about is public money, right? So a lot of times. Um, Organizations in our local area, like local government, may have contracts. They may not be framed as grants, but they may have contracts that they open um, to businesses that are eligible that you may be able to, you know, respond to their solicitations and apply to become a contractor with the government. You can do this with maybe after school programming, social services, education programming, maybe with Veterans Affairs, the Department of Um, employment services. You may be able to do this with your community development agency. There are like public monies and public grants and contracts out there um, that may be willing, those agencies may be willing to work with you, even if you're pretty much a startup. It's really about the relationships you make and who you know. And if you get to know the people in the local agencies who control that money, you can get a lot farther along than you thought you could. So start going into the community, start going to their interest meetings, start looking at the solicitations, start tracking how they move and the kind of things they ask for and the kind of services that they request so you can kind of figure out, okay, well, we may be able to provide that service. Another thing may be the government may subsidize some of the work you do. So say you provide a service, like let's just say childcare or after-school programming, there may be money that can subsidize the cost of it so you don't have to charge your clients, but you can get that money from the government. So think about ways in government funding that may be able to finance the work that you're doing in the beginning. The last thing I'll say is build relationships with local companies in your area. So figure out who's invested in your local area. You know how I always say, you know, stay local, look in your general community. 
who's invested in doing good work in your community, or maybe there are businesses or companies that want to give back, but they only want to give back in the areas that they have headquarters in or areas where a lot of their employees reside. So do another list of small businesses who may be interested in helping you, who may have common interests, and think about asking them for in-kind donations. Think about possible sponsorships for events or sponsorships for services that you provide. And remember, when you go to them, it's not just about what you want from them. It's about a mutual understanding. How can you help them? How can you support them? And in, in exchange, they can provide sponsorship to support you. All right. So it's more about a mutual benefit. So I hope you realize as I went through like all those five things that there's a common theme through all of it. And the common theme is building genuine relationships. You'll learn this eventually in your startup journey that fundraising and building a nonprofit is about the genuine relationships and connections that you make. And if you invest in those relationships and those connections, they'll get you much further than anything else that you do. So just remember that, that it's about building real connections and build rela real relationships. So there you have it. Those are five strategies you can use to get startup funding for your nonprofit. If you have any other questions for me, please visit me at www.bossonabudget.com. But don't forget to comment below if you have any other suggestions for startup funding, but also to check out some freebies in the description box on my website that you can look at for your startup nonprofit. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the bell to get updates, and also share this video with someone who needs this information. I love that you're here. Thank you for watching me and I will see you next time.